Okay, Kim. I need to think about this whole advanced theory stuff that Measurehead was talking about. Let's uh, see what else we could do. I think we should ask some more people about these tattoos. Let's go and speak to this guy. He's standing right here, or sitting right here, should I say? Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Yeah. No luck there. Okay. We'll try see if there's anyone else. We might as well. Do I have any tear? That's the other thing. Do I have any tear? I'm not sure if I do. Have I read this book? I think I might have. The Greatest Innocence. I think that was the one I was... I was arguing with one of them anyway. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man. It still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the oh. night sky. But something's not right. Who are you? Gone. That doesn't help. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone closer to the victim might know. Yeah. We've already asked Joyce. That's the only person we know. But I think we still need to talk to more people about it. So let's see who else do we have. I think we've spoken to that guy quite a bit. Probably would have asked him already, I would imagine. Mm. No more tear either. Oh, we've spoken to that lady. But we've solved that one. What else? We've already looked in here. Just need to kill some time. How long do I have? An hour and a half. Hour and a half. Okay. And the snow's coming down hard again. I also need to get some smokes. I could really do with a drink, Kim, as well. But I need some money for that first, I think. Let's see if there's anything else that we have missed. How far can we go down here? No, nothing, nothing. We need to be more thorough, Kim. We need to be more thorough. Nothing. Nothing at all. So look at this bench. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Yeah, I'm just being thorough, Kim. Just checking out everything. The damage looks like it could have been caused by an earthquake. Maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza. Yeah, right. Okay. I don't think so. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side reads, RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind, Be Vigilant. Good mailbox. Good mail delivery box. Yeah. Spreading the, the message. Seems happy. That's good. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon and sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. B 
Been there, Postal Aventure here. Mail collection box, been there. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankful even. So do you. Hmm. You shudder. Then you swallow. Good. Let's leave. Tear. I need tear. Where can I get more tear? And just the pictures. Have we spoken? We yeah, have those are the two guys playing bull. Right. Maybe speak to Joyce again. See if she can fill me in a little bit more on reality. Because I still have no bloody idea who I am. We know what's up there. We can't speak to that guy until this evening. Joyce! You're back. I Good. am. What can I help you with? Um, got some more questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? Please. My favourite part of the day. Go ahead. Ask me anything. Um... You said pale. What's pale? The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. Oh. Yes. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. Remember, we have a cadaver to attend to. Yeah, and I'm working on that, Kim. I'm working on that. All right, we're going to try and get Measurehead to help us. His voice is low, but firm. All she can say is... Of course, Lieutenant. Let's try something else. No, no, I mean, there's, you know you know my problem. You, you can't just say that. What do you mean it's not part of reality? Ma'am, remember you are dealing with a very sensitive and impressionable police officer who is still recovering from a recent medical episode. Okay, Kim, this isn't actually helping. It's making me more, more determined to find out what's going on. The lieutenant's right. Let's change topics. <sighs> what do you want to know? Anything. But... She wants to tell you. I know she does. I know she does, and I want to know. I want to know. Kim, could you just give Joyce and I a moment, please? Good idea. Just ask him. He won't make a scene. Can I talk to Ma'am alone for a second? Fine. See? What can he do? You're a grown man. I am. That's right, even just because I can't remember things. Okay, Joyce, what is the pale? Are you sure you're sure? Well, Your colleague seemed adamant. Yes, but look, I need to try and make sense of things. What is the pale? Okay. The pale is the most dominant geological feature of the world, Detective. The separative tissue between the Islas. It is the inter mass. Okay, an Isla... Isola is a Mycenaean word for a continent of matter, enveloped on all sides by the pale. Also, isolation, or landmass. We used to believe there was only one. In the last four centuries, we have discovered seven. Okay. Windy, Seol, Samara, Ilmara, Grad, Katla, and this in Silinde. I'm not going to remember this. Uh, uh, Insulindi is... An oceanic isola. It comprises mostly of water. Moindi is the largest. Katla, the coldest. Insulinde, the bluest. What can I say? Each is perishing and dear. Okay, and this pale, what is it like? Achromatic, odorless, featureless. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. It is not like any other or anything in the world it is the transition state of being into nothingness sort of feels like where i'm at at the moment um okay how much pale is there compared to the world the pale outweighs reality two to one there is more pale than there is matter and the ratio is slipping slipping how to our detriment or 
What do you think, detective? Um, it's growing. There's more and more of the pale. Precisely. One of the few measurable effects of the pale is that it is expanding at an unknown rate. Yeah, like my memory loss. An intuitive conclusion of that development is that one day the pale will cover everything. But this sort of talk is mostly left to extremists. But... Suddenly, yeah, uh, the way I feel doesn't sound extreme at all. It's going to happen eventually, I suppose. Isn't that what, like, death? Most people, and indeed most private and government sector organizations, entire civilizations and religions even, find handy ways to ignore or downplay that knowledge. I suggest you do the same. Off we go. You see the hanged man's mouth open. Off we go into the pale yonder. One and all. They say pale is death. Ah, huh, see? But for the universe. Why should we just leave and leave and the world get left behind? Mm. Okay, but if we're surrounded by pale, how do you get from Isola to Isola? Oh, it is so difficult for us. A squall of birds. Hardware operating in the harbour. Firm. Self-evident. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude, bouncing radio waves from one end to the other, shortening the path. You know a lot, Joyce. But it is still hard for humans to navigate the pale without getting lost. Or having our minds damaged. Could that be what happened to me? The pale can damage the mind? Extensively. Or how? Some say the damage stems from extreme sensory deprivation. Others argue that pale somehow consists of past information that's degrading. That it's rarefied past, not rarefied matter. They call it the blend over of the self. The pale does not only suspend the laws of physics, but also the laws of psychology. Maybe history even. The human mind becomes over-radiated by past. Okay, and what does this over-radiation feel like? It feels terrible. Absolutely terrible. International standards strictly limit civilian travelers to six days of pale exposure per year. Oh, wow. It's more for her. Way more. You're not a civilian passenger, though, Joyce, are you? No, nameless detective of the citizens' militia. I am a member of the entrepreneurial business class. I'm cleared and trained for 22 days of pale transit annually. Okay, so three and a half times more than everyone else, but six is deemed bordering on dangerous for everyone else. Perhaps that explains a strange pining after the revolution. Some degraded early memories. Hmm, possibly. Someone else you've met may have been exposed as well. The strange grey-haired woman in her lorry. Hmm. Do lorry drivers pass the pail? Yes. Carried in the hulls of airships. It's a horrific job. Automation will abolish it soon. Along with a lot of other things it will abolish, I imagine. You should ask the pail driver about this. See what she says. I think I will. That poor woman must have stories to tell, like you wouldn't imagine. Do you think you're over-radiated, over Joyce? Up to my gills, officer. Okay. So what are its physical qualities, or is it outside of physical qualities? It's difficult to describe, or even measure. Something whose fundamental property is the suspension of properties. Physical, epistemological, linguistic. The further into pale you travel, the steeper the degree of suspension. Right down to the mathematical. Numbers stop working. No one has yet passed the number barrier. It may be impossible. Is it here? Around here now? No, detective. We're safe. It begins there, 6,000 kilometers to the north. 
and even more to the south, east, and west. You are in the middle of the Isola. Okay. This is rather terrifying. I suppose I'd be more scared if I felt I had something to lose, which is hard to do with no memories. As your gaze instinctively turns north, a small black pit opens up in your stomach. So, 6,000 kilometers from the end of the world. Yes. That is enough. Many cities are built much closer. And a point north there? An uproar of matter, darling. Rising into the pale. Rolling. Evaporating, even. A great vision. The area of transition between the world and the pale is called porch collapse. Okay. Imagine a grey coronal mist, cold vapour marked by spores of an opportunistic microorganism. A mould that's adapted to grow at the edge of the unrest. It's uh, the most disco thing you will ever see. Disco. Hmm. And what's entrepreneurtic? Entrepreneurtics is the scientific study of the pale, or a recent iteration of it by way of grad. The study of the Pale reaches back 6,000 years. The Periconarsians called it the Western Plain. And did they cross it, the Western Plain? There are signs of pre-modern crossings. Successful navigation of the Pale relies not just on technical know-how, but intensive psychological preparation. Some of these tactics have been known for thousands of years. Okay, so what has Entrepreneurics changed then? Nothing. We remain powerless before the Pale. The only real advance in Pale Transit is the speed with which an aerostatic craft can pierce it. Less exposure leads to less... effects later. And what are aerostatic craft? Hybrid airships, Detective. Conventional rotors or jet engines no longer add velocity after the point of reference for motion is suspended. Once you've crossed from near Pale to far Pale. Right. In essence, we throw them in and they come out the other end. If we throw them precisely. And if we do not? Then they don't. Oh. Okay. Let's return to, well, this, this semblance of reality at least, please. Yes, sweet reality. But before we do, tell me, Detective. Uh-huh. Is this the first time you're hearing this? Do you really not remember anything? I... Sometimes sense vague shadows of a past and it's... Well, it's not good. Then tell me, what do you think of the pale? Ah. Now there's a question. Uh... I think you were right, Joyce. I think it's disco. Mm -hmm. Her eyes tense, crow's feet radiate from them. She observes you, your bloodshot eyes and swollen face. You really didn't know? No. This does not spell good for the investigation, detective. If you don't know even this, then... Don't worry, Joyce. This investigation will be my masterpiece. The one they remember me by, I promise. I hope so. I truly do. If I may suggest, hold on to your colleague, Kitsuragi. I ran a check on him and he is very competent. In the meanwhile... I will. Some of that assurance is meant for herself, as much as it's meant for you. She must have a lot on the line here. I am getting the sense of that. You have me. I will assist you in any way I can, even if we have to do it one basic term at a time. Well, thank you. She gives me a slight bow. Good. You have not passed out from it. No. Perhaps I worried for nothing. Are we still on the reality lowdown, or should we do actual police work now? Th that was fucking insane, Kim. Yes, well, the rest of us have dealt with it for thousands of years, so... He looks around a little uncomfortable now. You will have to deal with it, too, the lieutenant thinks. This is why I didn't want you to know. Okay, let's get to work, lieutenant. Good luck, detectives. Thanks, Joyce. Okay. What have we got? 
What have we got? Okay. Nothing new. Still more time. Still more time. And still a sense that we're missing something, Kim. Let's see if this woman lets us in. The door was open this time. Okay. I think we've we have checked this place out already, really. The sea below looks cold and winter grey. Let's see if there's any other doors we can knock on. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Let's knock again, see if we have any better luck this time. A poor communard, from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. This time the steps come closer. Who is this? Demands a female voice, wary and tense. This is the police, open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. Yeah, well, look, we've got to ask around, Kim. You know? This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk-drawn number on the board says number 11. Let's examine the padlock. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. I might have those. Do I have those? Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. Let's do it. Hmm. Or maybe not. Let's, uh... Get the... Where are my cutters? Tools. Here we go. Let's put them... There we go. Let's try again. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. Okay. It should be possible to enter now. Well, it's been locked from the outside, so I'm going to... Well, I'd like to hope there's no one inside, Kim. I think this is a responsible thing to do, to check. After you, detective. Okay, what do we have here? A flamboyant poster of a white star, real litho lithography. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads, Kras Marzov. Didn't someone call me that at some point, Kim? Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. Really? I probably should look in the mirror. I still have no idea what I even look like. I'm not sure I want to know. Kim, you do have to admit... Actually, I can't say that because I don't know that. Why does this tenant have a bust of Krasmazov in their bedroom? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Okay. What else do we have? <laughs> Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. Revolutionaries love to pose with their guns. Books of critical theory on the monstrosities of capital and such. Okay, what have I got? Bullet. Oh, very fancy jacket. I will take those. Doesn't like anyone's been in here for a while, Kim. Let's have a look at that jacket. What does my current jacket do? Plus one, esprit de corps, and this one is conceptualization. Esprit de corps is already quite high. Conceptualization is low. I'm going to wear this jacket for now. I need to remember I have esprit de corps, though, if I need it. Yeah. Yeah, about time I changed my jacket. Here we go. Anything else? Oh. What do we 
have here? Moss crawls on those bathroom tiles. Actual moss. Does anyone use this bathroom? These shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Kim, this is disgusting. Magnesium. And some alcohol. Yes. You never know. Could be pertinent to something, Kim. I'll take it and hang on to it. And some money. Okay, I'm almost up to my... Almost have enough money to pay for my room tonight. Okay. Let's uh, head to the balcony. Right. Is there anything else out here? I don't think so. Check this out. Oh, excellent. Some more rail. How do we get up here? Door is locked. Okay, let's just check. How do we get up there? Kim? Kim, any ideas? How do we get up there? Maybe we need to go in and up to get out. Let's see if we can get back in. Okay, this is a uh, number. I think this is where we need to. Okay, I think apartment 28 is where our guy is. Hmm. No way through. Okay, let's go back inside. See if we can find some stairs inside that lead back up. That's just to the bathroom. How do we get up there? Are there any other stairs? We've done all the doors in here. That's the door. We know where that goes. What about this balcony? No, this leads out to this woman out here. We can't get through there. What have we got? Some tear. Wonderful. Okay. That's the door. Let's try this one. Okay, Kim. Where are we? A boiler room of some kind. And it doesn't look like there is anything of note or interest in here whatsoever. No. Nothing. Okay. Let's talk to her again. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Is that bed in the coal room yours? Ooh. Not only have you found my address... You've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. Don't you have a real home? Does anyone in a city like this? She replies wistfully looking around. If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep, fortified herself against it. Well, it's not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Okay, fair enough. I have other questions. Shoot, Piggy. It's what you do, isn't it? Oh, look. Catch you later, Cindy. Catch you later. Right. Let's just get back out. I think that's this place done, Kim. We've checked that balcony. That's the place, that's where we came in. That woman won't open the door. We've checked in there. And this balcony. 
just brings us out the back. Okay. How much time? Hour and five. Right, let's, let's just leave. And uh, maybe... 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 Just have a drink to take the edge off. Yeah. I think... Let's have a look at what I've got. Let's have a look at what I've got. I've still got these. I'm going to hang on to. Tools. I don't need my wire cutters at the moment. I do have some alcohol, though. I'll try and hold off. I'll try and hold off. I'm going to try and be good. Nothing else. We've looked at all of this stuff. I can't remember which book it was. I'm going to check this book again just to see. You stare at the now familiar black and white rainbow. The book feels heavy in your hands. Start reading. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Hugo Grad riots in the 20s. Youths overturn motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze, while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and disperse them in a flurry of baton blows. Mm. As ethnic tensions run wild, a pair of young lovers meet each other on the street. Somehow, in the middle of all the chaos, they manage to lock arms and look into each other's eyes. Well, if I have read this, I've forgotten about it. What happens next? It would physically hurt you to keep reading. Are you sure? Read ten more pages. They go through a brief and somewhat awkward love affair. And in the end, they betray each other and succumb to the absurdity of Guardian life. The man becomes a lens grinder, completely abandoning his former existence. Rather depressing. He toils through the daily drudgery at the Lenka Polyfabricate. Happiness and fulfillment have eluded him his whole life. And in the end, he has nothing to do but dedicate himself to the craft. And the woman? She spends the next several decades standing at a conveyor in a Sosnivore fish processing plant. The smell of fish guts slowly seeps into her hair and skin as every single one of her dreams dies, one by one. Oh my, this, this is a book? The memory of their short time spent together tortures the former lovers ceaselessly until the end of their days. Years pass in solitude, their bodies growing ever more decrepit. Why can't I put this book away? As life leaves their remains between the soil sheets, their final thoughts are filled with regret. Okay, that's some heavy, heavy shit. Right. But we have passed some time. At least. Okay. Kim, why didn't... Oh, my. I had an instinct that I shouldn't have read it, but... I went and read it anyway. It's probably why I drink. Okay. Any more? Let's go to the tear shop. It's on the way to Measure Head. Probably help if I go the right way. It's on the way to Measure Head. I have some alcohol, which it's there if I need it. It's just, it's that's comforting to know it's there, but I'm going to try not to drink it. I just need to find some, some smokes now. I could do with the smoke. Okay, do I have any tear? 
I don't think I have too much. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says one bottle equals 10 cents. Let's put the bottles in. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. I almost have enough to pay for my room tonight. This is good. This is good. What are these? You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. Okay. I don't need a raincoat. I like my new jacket. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Um, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium, and Hypnogamma. Okay, Magnesium. Good to know. Okay, all this is good to know. I need to hang on to my money at the moment. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That is good to know. I may, I may be back as soon as I find some more money. Maybe we should have bought a raincoat, Kim. Anyway, not going to worry about that. Still have some time. I need to think more about Measurehead a little, for a little longer. So let's go and talk to the pale, the pale, where was she? She was over this way. The pale driver. Well, this woman about the pale, whether I should or not. I'm also thinking, Kim, after reading that book, I wasn't feeling too good. I'm just going to take one of these. Yes. Happier with that. Uh, morale. Let's up my morale a little bit. Done. Feel a bit better now. A bit of magnesium in me. Let's go talk to this woman again. Loman, you caught me at an opportune moment. This awful weather keeps me awake. You can entertain me with your questions. And before I came, you seemed away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. You hear that, Loman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Uh, wait, why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. Just, the routes you drive are unusual, aren't they? Some of them. Some of them are like home to me now. I would say the routes I drive are usual to me. What routes? Lomonosov's Land, Udajnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain. The Western Plain. She nods and closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. The Transcatalia Magistral. You for one A. And the Stradas do mirror. All the good ones. The deep trenches. Where the bluebirds fly. She opens her eyes again and shudders. Hmm. I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You probably should take better care of yourself. You're right, Loman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. Thank oh. you for looking out for me. Okay, that's fair. A correct appraisal. You're quite shabby. Yeah, yeah. Is that all you woke me up to say? Look, I think I think I know what's going on with you. And what is that? She sticks a filterless cigarette into a cigarette holder and reaches for the light. You're a pail driver. You transport goods through the pail. Great. He asked the pines rep about the pail, and now he's talking to everyone about it. I'm just trying to figure things out, Kim. Fine, then. Just try not to black out again, and don't contemplate. We don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's possible, given that everything's related to the pale. My condition, this, the case, everything. It's all entrepreneurial. That is exactly what I didn't want you to think. 
Ma'am, my partner wanted to know if you work in pale transport. No offense, but your partner? She lights the cigarette. A white and a silver cloud of smoke disappears into her mouth. <sighs> Seems like a bit of an idiot. Oh, that's a bit harsh. She breathes out. The air tastes sweet. Republica. A filterless cigarette from Misk. I blacked out after a night of heavy drinking and lost all memory of the world. <laughs> like Gabriel Buenguerro in Pergunte Apoeira. You're the opposite of me, then. I remember everything. Even things I never knew. Things you never knew? The smell of liquor on Gabriel's lips after the shoot. In the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. On the grand stairs of Ryle. The smoke from the fouling piece when Dolores Day was shot. The look on her face like an orgasm. The wound in her chest. My hand in my father's hand. Except I never had a father. And I never shot her innocence as Dolores Day. Over radiation? Heroic doses, Harifia. Heroic. But isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion? Dithering? The Grad Catalan Magistral? It's more than dangerous. It's sad. But at first I had to make a living. Now, when you've seen it all go away like that, rolling off like the sea, and then come back to this... She gestures at the square, the broken horse monument, the clanging of machines in the distance. What are we doing here? For thousands of years, Gabriel. It doesn't have to be like this. We can just give up. We can just become a vapor. So what does it look like, the pale? Like looking into the ocean at night, in the dark. And? You cannot see it, but you know it's there. And it's big, bigger than anything. Bigger than all the other things combined. What does that feel like? Nothing, until it starts. When you are deep enough, then, for me, it's like autumn. Dark, gray, and orange. The orange of street lights and the color of streets in the electric light. It smells like autumn, too. It smells terrible. Nostalgia. Cooped up in the cabin, shaking. Terrible nostalgia. For yourself. For humans. It's too much to bear. She loves it. How do you pass through it? In the belly of an airship, behind the cell windows. So you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. Not on this lorry, then? No, the same one, a roller. They all are nowadays. Special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hold. She points to the machines, clumped up like toys. The wheels all small and round. Multi-axle trailers. Just one last thing. You said we can just become vapor? Yes. Okay. I feel I already have what you have in some way. They say there's a point. One that I have not crossed. In the pearl, super deep. If you stray too far, of course, on the U-41A. Or in Lomonosov's land where every step you take is one step further from home, no matter the direction. It's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there is a flip. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of indescribable finale. Maybe you've been down the motorway south? I don't know. She looks at a cigarette, it's almost out. She has swallowed it hungrily, then at you. The motorway south. It's a story as lone horsemen tell. Lone horsemen, Harifa, not pearl drivers. Way beyond the established pearl that's lit by radio frequencies, where it goes silent and dark, and the process begins, erasure, kilometer by kilometer, in any direction. The motorway south is a road you cannot come back from. In the center of this town, there's a ghostly motorway, she sang. 
So what's at the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. I've only glimpsed the beginning. I've only felt it in the distance when I was a child. A child growing on the leg. Ma'am? <sighs> Josiane. A sigh escapes her lips, then silence as she stares within herself. There is nothing more to do now. She's far away. She is receding in the clutches of some indescribable scattered emotion. A child descending. You've fried both your brains enough for today, detective. He inspects her. No response. Let's get some air. This one's far gone. He shakes his head silently as he turns to leave. Oh dear. Seems like I've upset him again. Let's have a look here. Motorway south. At the edge of the map, the landmass begins to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of sines and cosines. The mountain range turns into a sharp angled azimuth. Its green rain shadow dithers like music turning into a waveform, and then vanishes. This is the end, a half-remembered textbook from your childhood. The porch collapsing on the edge of the isola. A transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out like a rocket. It's the motorway south, splintering off from the known pale. To where? Where does it go? Hmm. I'm not gonna... For now, I'm not gonna think too much about that one. How are we doing on... This one? A minute. Okay. Let's uh, head back to Measurehead. Speak to this guy again, just in case we didn't ask him about the tattoos. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! No. No. No, 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 no. Nothing. Let's speak to this dude again. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Look, you probably know I've come to Martinez investigating a murder. Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. I whisper to him, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's okay. I have no idea what I'm doing either. I don't even know what day it is. Don't tell me. It's a better day that way. <laughs> okay, good talking to you. Gotta run. Advanced race theory. Okay. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind bending phylogenetics appear more distant and, to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. I think I will. I think I will. Learning cap for rhetoric, race to five, plus one conceptualization. The mystery is mostly aesthetic. Okay. Okay. Measurehead. The dude that nearly broke me. Let's, uh... Speak to him again, see where this goes. The unpromising race pupil returns. Okay. Let's, uh... I think I know what the race enigma is. And? Uh... Okay, let me get my thoughts together. Mm. Well, I think my thoughts on it are I don't know about the rest, but it's clear I should stop drinking the ancient Ilmaran mine poison Al Ghul. Fascinating. 
there was surely in the general show signs of racial self-reflection. How did you accomplish this little feat? Uh, well, I think it's always been 100% clear to me that the answer to the race enigma is I should stop drinking. So it would seem, Thor of Hull. I find myself at a crossroads. On one hand, this pathetic self-therapy has little to do with the great mystery of living organisms, the race enigma. And, of course, you will not be able to free yourself from the yoke of rule. It is too late. It may be little to stop at this point, but still. He pauses in heroic doubts. While my doubt about being able to stop, yes, increases exponentially. Your willpower fires up, directing you to speak. If the Revacholian Degenerate is capable of critical thought, he may still prove a race adversary. Why should I help my adversary? He looks at the red buttons, seeking counsel from his own ideals. Jean, baby, do the heroic thing. But first of all, I will stop drinking. That is not possible. The game of Shahmat you play against the rules tricks is unwinnable. The days, the weeks, the months will wear you out. The Occidental Aplo group is incapable of long-term lucid thoughts. Oh. Look, just now, could you open the doors? I need to talk to Everard about getting that body down. Very well. You may enter once. He punch Our conversation here has concluded. He punches the emergency button with his fist. Well done. Let's go. Thank you, Kim. See? Trust me. I... There's a... I was going to say there's a method in my madness, but I just think maybe there's more madness in my method. Who knows? Okay. So. How do we... this the door that's been opened right where the devil are we and why is there no one in here okay let's check everything out a giant a, a giant ass print on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest someone is habitually chilling next to the radio the radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds Every worker equals member of the board is written at the top of the flyers. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. And at the bottom, the union logo and demand democracy. A standard office file cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. What else have we got, Kim? And why is Everard not in here? On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Isn't it just, Kim? Isn't it just? Let's see what's inside, he thinks. Let's open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Which I am about to browse through. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world. From Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol. Kuron, Coal City, La Delta and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Well, that makes sense. Is there anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, 
but the lines are getting blurry. Okay, just like focus, focus. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Okay, what does the note say? It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. Who's Leo? All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Kim, look, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Mean anything to you? Everard Claire, probably. The head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. Okay, have another look at it. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes. Okay. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Okay. What else do we have? What's this? A book. Well, I'll take that just in case it's important to the case. And have a look at this as well. Postcard. It's all evidence, Kim. Just in case. Never know. Magnesium. I must have the magnesium. Oh. Some sunglasses. Might be fingerprints on them, Kim. I better take them just in case. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Okay. Let's, let's put some money in. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Okay. Hmm. Let's have a look at what I've got first. Do I have anything to help me with interfacing? I'm not sure I do. If I do, I'm already wearing it. Okay. The already familiar cold touch of plastic. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now, your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Useful patterns? Undoubtedly, no. Okay, I might try this again later. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Indeed. Okay. Let's head on up. Right. Oh! The tarpaulin cloak is still hanging on the railing. The white rectangle of the Revachol Citizens Militia is clearly visible on its back. Have I been up here already? As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. Mm. I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. That's what the cloak is relaying. Okay. I am so happy to get my cloak back. Okay. This is good. This is good. I like the conceptualization. Probably a bit better for this weather. Yep, we'll stick with that for now. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Right, Kim. What else have we got up here? Just something collecting rainwater. What is this? White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. 
all around you. Great machines in quiescence. Kim, now that we're in, Measurehead said we could only get through once. We need to check everything. And we need to find Everett Claire. Yep, we've got a job to do. 